Bradley, when you borrowed the money from us, we didn't give you part of it, did we? You weren't even around the bank when we borrowed it. No, but I am now. You're probably delighted to hear that I'm running the bank for your old friend, Mr. Gurney, while he's recuperating. Recuperating from what? Being fired. <laughs> After all the years he was president? At my instigation, Mrs. Bradley, the CNFW Railroad invested money in this borrower's paradise, and it's my duty to see that it adheres to my usual high standards of ruthlessness, cruelty, and inhumanity. <laughs> in the files, I've designated this as Operation Thumbscrew. <laughs> you know, I've known a lot of mean, ornery people in my time, but you can hang your head with the best of them. For those kind words, Mrs. Bradley, I'll see to it that your furniture is carried out of the hotel instead of thrown out. Oh, there's still a chance I might raise the money. How? I have a lot of friends in this valley, and maybe they can all get together and lend me the money to save the shady rest. I doubt it. They'll be too busy scurrying around trying to save their own miserable hovels. What does that mean? I am foreclosing the undue mortgages and unpaid notes of all of your friends. That should take care of most of the population of this valley. In no time at all, the entire area will be known as Death Valley Junior. <laughs> it seems to me you've gone to an awful lot of trouble to shut down the shady rest. Aren't we being a little self-important, Mrs. Bradley? My prime target, as always, is that Stone Age stagecoach known as the Hooterville Cannonball. But with this valley all deserted, the Hooterville Cannonball won't have any reason for running. Termites will gnaw away at its uncomfortable little coach. Happy vultures will nest in its cab. Lizards will raise their young in its rusty boiler. Make a lovely illustration for a Christmas card, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you hate Christmas. Great tragedies don't just happen. They're planned. I don't believe I've forgotten anything, have I? Except for one thing. Rubbing your hands together and saying... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> tables, roulette tables, chuck luck pinball machines, and boxes of chips for a Monte Carlo gambling knot. Selma Plout brought it over. But the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club voted Monte Carlo night at her house. She ain't gonna have a house. Bed loads of victim her. He's cracking down on Sam Drucker, too. Ben Miller's losing his farm. Fred Ziffel's packing his pigs and getting out. Oh, Uncle Joe, this is too much. People losing their homes, their stores, their farms. The girls being put out of the place they were born in and 30 years of hard work down the drain. Well, it could have been worse. How? Bedlow could have put us out of here Friday and we couldn't have had the party. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Davis, it's good to see you. And you simmer down. You're going to have to excuse him. These days, he's so confused, he can't tell the difference between a paying customer and a bill collector. Boy, would Charlie tell me that things have been going badly? Well, I'd like to say it wasn't so. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, we're not licked yet. We still have a little time. You know, the whole family's pitching in. We'd do anything to save this hotel. You got any ideas? Well, what I thought hey, first... Hey, girls want to ask you something. Oh, hello, Mr. Davis. How are you? Uh, fine, Mr. Carson. You still traveling for that book company? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Davis, would you excuse me, please? Uh, uh, do you mind waiting out here? I want to get your opinion on the effect. The effect. <laughs> uh, Mr. Carson, what kind of an outfit is that you're wearing? Oh, professional gamblers get up. Gambler? Ideal stud. You mean stud poker? Yeah, you see, the house gets a better percentage than blackjack. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, Mrs. Bradley. Not, not, not yet, Mr. Davis. Uncle Joe, would you mind helping me move the dice table? Women. They never can make up their mind. First, they want the dice table next to the roulette layout. Then they want it next to the chuckle. Mr. Davis, if you ever start a gambling joint, leave the women out of it. <laughs> no. You weren't supposed to come in yet. But you stay right where you are, and we'll give you the full treatment. Ready, girls? Mighty proud of them. 
They act like they've been dancing in gambling joints all their lives. There must be another way to raise money. No, the girls discussed everything, and this seemed the fastest. You can't do that. You can't turn this quiet, nice little hotel into a, I don't know what. I'd rather you lost it. Well, Mr. Davis, do you think that we're trying to... <laughs> I don't think it's very funny. Oh, Mr. Davis. Mrs. Bradley, the strain has been too much for you. We're not doing what you think we're doing. Oh, we're doing this to raise money for Mom's Discussion Club. What? Can we sell you a ticket? They're only two dollars. You get a hundred dollars worth of chips. And the one who wins the most by the end of the evening gets a prize. Oh, well, I'll be glad to take five. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Davis. When is this little affair? The night before the foreclosure. This might very well be Shady Rest's farewell party. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe it don't have to be a farewell party. Mr. Davis just gave me a great idea. Why don't we turn this place into a real gamble? Uncle Joe! <laughs> Go practice dealing from the bottom of the deck. <laughs> I'm just giving Betty Jo some practice. We better not let him play at the party. He'd break the bank. He's won 18 times in a row. Beginner's luck. <laughs> it ain't luck, Mr. Carson. I get vibrations from the wheel. It's kind of like ESP. Yes? What's that? <laughs> Extra sensory perception. Well, I know is I get vibrations from the wheel. <laughs> what number are you vibrating up now? Sixteen. Sixteen. It's beginner's luck. You couldn't do it again in a million years. Eighteen. Thirteen. I told you. Hold it, Betty. That's 18. Part of that white paint's wore off that eight. You're right. You win. How many times did you say you did this in a row? 19 now. If this were Monte Carlo and he were letting his winnings ride, he'd have won $16 trillion. <laughs> Willie, come outside. I want to talk to you. But I'm playing roulette. Bring the wheel with you. <laughs> Nineteen. See, you had two hundred and twenty-two million dollars right in that time. Payoff is thirty-six to one. It's thirty-six times two hundred and twenty-two million. See, six times one, so six times another one. Can't I go home now, Mr. Carlson? Well, you got a lot more spinning to do. I want to make sure he ain't a fluke. I already vibrated sixty-two right numbers in a row. Look, Willie. You want to go to Las Vegas, or don't you? Sure, I ain't never seen Montana. <laughs> it's in Nevada. I ain't never seen that either. <laughs> well, you're going to see it as soon as I make sure you're foolproof so as I can get folks to invest in our syndicate. Uncle Joe? Don't say anything to Kate about this. Uncle Joe, I... Oh, Willie, I thought you'd gone home. I'm trying to, but Mr. Carson won't let me stop vibrating. <laughs> you, you did say vibrate. Uh, Willie's afflicted with the vibrates, Kate. Uh, Willie, you don't need to worry. There's a cure for it. I want it cured. Then you wouldn't send me to Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Goodbye, Willie. Bye, Mr. Carson. That's in the bottom, Miss Bradley. Uncle Joe's going to send you to Las Vegas? Well, just as soon as he can raise up enough money for my fare. Uh, Willie's going to save the hotel. Kate, do you know what this is? How many guesses do I get? <laughs> you think it's a finger, don't you? Well, it sure looks like one, but I got a feeling it's going to turn out to be something else. <laughs> Kate, this is the key to the solution to all your problems. Pay off the mortgage, put millions in your bank account, send the girls to the best schools, clothe you in mink, buy you a diamond, send you to Europe. Kate, there ain't anything you can think of this finger can't do for you. Oh, I wouldn't want to put it to any trouble. You know what Willie's got? An extra century in his perception. <laughs> Willie, vibrate the number for Kate. Fourteen. 
14. That's the 63rd time in a row he's called the right number, plus 19 with Betty. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that $32 you got for the mortgage, and I'm going to form a syndicate. We're going to sell shares in Willie, send him to Las Vegas, let him play for a couple of hours, and then he'll send us home a couple of million. We can pay off bed low and... No. Hey. You're not throwing away the only money we have in the world on one of your harebrained schemes. But, but this ain't one of our ordinary harebrained schemes. No. Okay. Eight. That's 16 right numbers in a row. That's the doggondest thing I ever saw. How much did I put you down for, Sam? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I ain't interested. Willie, I bring up another number. 22. 22. That's amazing. Then you're in? You know, I'm out. And I wish I had been when you came in. Sam, <laughs> you'll be a millionaire. No, for the fiddling price of a round-trip ticket to Las Vegas. You sure he's gonna win? Positive. Well, what do you need a round-trip ticket for? My ma said I can't go unless I get one. See, if his own mind got no confidence in him, why should I? Not one way. When he starts busting the bank, then casino operator will be glad to pay his way home just to get rid of him. What do you say, Sam? No, I ain't interested. A piddling one-way ticket for a million dollars. I ain't interested. Sam, I'm desperate. This ain't for me, it's for Kate. Don't you want to see her pay off Bedlow? Well, of course I do, Joe, but I ain't got it. Bedlow's putting the screws to me, too. I gotta pay off my note or I'll be out of business. Then why didn't you just say so, instead of letting Willie waste all them vibrations? <laughs> You're trying to be neighborly. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen. Why, Mr. Carson, that's the most amazing demonstration I've ever seen. Then will you finance Willie's trip? Well... Why, Uncle Joe, the idea of bothering Mr. Davis, he's our guest. That's all right, Mrs. Bradley. If my business were any better, I'd be tempted to put up the money. This is the most frustrating thing that ever happened to me. I asked Sam, Ben Miller, Newt Kiley, Fred Ziffel... Hey, Willie, you got any money? <laughs> Afraid I ain't. Nobody's got any money. Bedlow has squoze the last cent out of this valley. Why don't you ask him? Bedlow? Well, if he ever got wind of the power in Willie's finger, he'd double-cross him away from him and put him on a plane to Las Vegas. Yeah, I guess he would. And... And what? And I think I'm beginning to see a ray of light. <laughs> I wonder if Bedlow will be on it. He will be, if Charlie gave him my message about wanting to get down on my knees and beg for mercy. <laughs> He's coming. Number 30. Well, good evening, Mrs. Bradley. Well, why don't you get down on your knees and start begging? Well, that won't be necessary now, due to Mr. Davis. May we go on with this? Time is money. Eighteen. I bet on eighteen. Eighteen? Let's see. What's going on here? None of your business, Bedlow. <laughs> you want to let the $82,962 ride? I'll let it ride on, um... Two. On two. I demand to know what's going on here. You win again. How much does that make? Let's see. Uh, that's that's going to take a bit of figuring. That's getting up into the big money. So see here. Who I, I... is this pest? <laughs> oh. This pest is Homer Bedlow, the man who almost foreclosed the mortgage on the Shady Rest. What do you mean, almost? I'm going to foreclose on Saturday. Did you hear that, Mr. Davis? <laughs> well, I can foreclose before Saturday. There's a clause in the mortgage that forbids the use of these premises for illegal purposes, and gambling is illegal. Oh, but we're not gambling. We're just demonstrating to Mr. Davis how he can win five billion dollars. Five billion? Yeah. If you wasn't such a rat, Bedlow, you could have gotten into it for a couple of million for yourself. I'm not interested in any of your rattlebrain schemes. Now, Mr. Davis, if you take my advice, you'll stay clear of this windbag. Mr. Bedlow, I'm not in the habit of misjudging people, or I wouldn't be president of one of the country's biggest corporations. What corporation? Mrs. Bradley, if this man doesn't leave at once, we can just forget all about sending this young man to Las Vegas. Oh, Mr. Davis, you shouldn't have mentioned where we're sending Willie to win the money in front of you-know-who. Bedlow, you ain't wanted around here. Get out. No, 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 see here. Sick him! Don't 
Do you think he recognized me? I don't see how. Well, my picture was on the cover of Business and Finance Weekly a couple of months ago. Would you like to try another spin at the wheel, Mr. Davis? No, I'm convinced. And worried about Bedlow overhearing what he did. Uh, Willie, you better go home and rest up your vibrations. You're going to need them in Las Vegas. Close as three hours, Mr. Bedlow. And I ain't missed one yet. I want to make sure it isn't a trick of Kate Bradley's. It ain't no trick. I got SPCA. <laughs> All right, Willie, you got a deal. Now, tomorrow, the first thing, I'll, I'll get you a first class train ticket for Las Vegas. That'll take too long. I got to be back to school by Monday. You better buy me an airplane ticket. Airplane? That's a dirty word in my book. <laughs> you realize I'm with the CNFW Railroad? And I went to Hooville High School, and I got to be back by Monday. Well, why are you asking me to compromise my principles? What time can you leave? <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I've been looking all over for you to give you the good news. You're gonna be deported. <laughs> Good luck. It'll probably be the last chance you'll ever have. That is, unless you see something funny in poverty. Get to the point, Bedlow. The point is that one hour ago, I put Willie and his talented finger on a plane for Las Vegas. And with him went winging your last chance to save your hotel. Oh, you're making that up. You're through. And so are you, Drucker. I'm going to evict everybody in this valley. By next week, it should be one vast, desolate, empty wasteland. Well, I guess you win, Homer. Yeah, guess there's nothing left for me to do except finish printing up this last issue of the Hooterville World Guardian. <laughs> Sam, I'd like a half a dozen copies for souvenirs. Help yourself, Kate. Yeah, take a dozen, wrap yourself up in them while you're sleeping in the snow. You know, I think I'll send a copy of this to, uh... Mr. Norman P. Curtis, president of the CNFW. Uh, your boss, remember? What for? Well, I think he'd be interested in that headline. Oh, no, you can't do that! <laughs> Why, Mr. Curtis hates planes. He'd fire me, he'd cut off my pension. I'd lose everything. I'd have to sleep in the snow. <laughs> Better take along a few copies of The Guardian to keep you warm. Mercy, mercy! Oh, you weren't about to show me any mercy, or Sam, or anybody in this valley. But I will, I will. I'll, I'll stop the, the foreclosure proceedings on the Shady West. I'll give you all the time you want to pay. I'll let everybody in the valley off the hook. What about Sam? I'll give him an extension on his loan, lend him more money. Will you put that in writing? Make out the affidavit. He already has. <laughs> I'll go get it, you sign it, and I'll notarize it. Oh, this is a terrible day for Homer Bedlow. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's so terrible about it? I've still got Willie. Here you are. Just sign right here. I'm not going to sign anything. I'm back to my old, mean, horrible, natural self. <laughs> I'll send Mr. Curtis a copy of this paper. Go ahead. Willie's going to win me millions. Let Curtis fire me. I'll probably buy the CNFW and fire him and 700 other CNFW employees. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I want you and all your meager possessions out of the Shady Rest by 0800 tomorrow morning. Doggone it, Kate. I thought your scheme was foolproof. Trouble is, it wasn't ghoulproof. <laughs> Stupid dog, what's the sense of dancing to an empty house? But where is everybody? I guess they're home and packing. That's what we should be doing. It just doesn't seem possible that we're going to have to move out of this place. Well, good evening, everybody. Ah, having a party? Who invited you? Well, I just dropped by to give you the weather report for tomorrow. There'll be uh, freezing rain, followed by sleet, snow, and sub-zero temperatures. Great weather for an eviction. <laughs> Homer Bedlow, you're a fiend. You're cruel, heartless, unspeakable. <laughs> yeah, he's an meaner. He'd have to be twins. It would be immodest of me to disagree. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. Willie. Hi, Bill Joe. Hi. Willie, what are you doing here? 
I got off the plane at the county seat and hitchhiked back. Wait, you stupid! That, I, that's all right. That's all right. Anybody can make a mistake. This looked like Las Vegas. All towns look the same from the air. No, I got off because I was scared. I ain't gonna fly there no how. Well, that's all right. We'll send you up by train or bus. I told you I gotta go to school. Well, we'll send a tutor along with you. Remember, all you have to do is win for your old fiend, uh, friend, Bedlam. <laughs> How's your old finger, Willie? It's fine. Well, why don't you vibrate a few numbers for Mrs. Bradley? Let her eat her kindly old heart out, realizing how close she came to keeping the shady rest. Well, it's all right, Willie. Eight. Twelve. Twelve? <laughs> yes, I missed. Well, try another one. Twenty-six, no, sixty-two. There isn't any 62. Now, stop <laughs> clowning. What number are you going to come up with? How's 21 sound? 21. Nine! <laughs> you ungrateful whelp. What's the matter with you? You trying to double-cross me? Willie wouldn't do that. No, sir. But what's wrong with you? I don't know. I had it when I got on the plane. I guess I ain't got it now. That's it, Homer. What do you mean? The airplane scared the ESP out of Willie. <laughs> Willie, I'm awful sorry you didn't get to see Las Vegas. I wouldn't have seen nothing but the outside anyway. You know, like you told me about being underage, they wouldn't even let me into the casino. So, get into town, tell Sam to bring that affidavit out here for Mr. Bedlow to sign. You are going to sign it, Homer. Mercy. And then tell the folks to stop packing and get out here. We're going to have the biggest, darndest celebration in the history of the valley. Aren't we, Homer? Oh, mercy. <laughs> I've got the name of the winner of Monte Carlo night. Sam Drucker. <laughs> Sam has just won $28,942 in make-believe money and is entitled to the grand prize, a bushel of tomatoes. <laughs> Kate, I, I'd like to split my winnings with you. Oh, you don't have to do that, Sam. I'd consider it an honor. Well, all right. <laughs> Draw the curtain. <laughs> Can't you people take a joke? <laughs> After you. Here, Sam, let me have it. Let me have it. <laughs> Go on, vibrate up the number. Vibrate a number. Stupid dog. You gotta show off and vibrate high numbers. Don't you realize while you're doing that, I'm losing millions? You're just gonna love Las Vegas. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.